Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the battleship once again, now with a little bit of paint finally added. Now, off camera, I'll be brutally honest, I've actually done very little this time. Normally, between episodes, I like to at least set up some new mechanics in the ships to show an upgrade or to show progress, but sadly, over the last week, I have been suffering from a bit of a summer flu, and the recent heatwave didn't help, so I've actually done very little. But don't you fret, don't you worry, we are still going to be testing something out today. It seems like I need to test things, just to see how things work in the campaign, because it's actually fun. I don't like being told how good one thing is or the other is. I prefer having something I don't really know, and then just throwing it against the enemy and hoping for the best, such as with the flak weapon. So what we're now doing is I have changed all of the advanced cannons on this ship to only use fragmentation shells. The shells, upon detonating, will detonate into loads of little fragments, I believe something like 500 for the larger shells, and something like 120 or so for the volley of shells from the main cannon, which hopefully should do two things. One, focus on a small area, thus causing a very small bit of damage, but very extreme in that small area, sorry, so I should say, a small scope of damage, a small area of damage, but very focused in that section. But also, the fragments should be able to get inside of these holes and thus do a lot of damage in sh inside of the ship, destroying turrets and ultimately causing havoc upon the enemy. All of the shells, including the biggest, also have a fuse. The word fuse apparently causing a massive coughing fit. Other than that, there isn't much difference now to the ship. I have um, started getting all the shields back online because some of them were taken offline by the recent patch, which has actually caused a very weird effect. The shields apparently now cause a shadow to be cast on the area they are covering. I've purposefully turned off the shields at the back here just to show you the contrast. No shields. Shields. I kind of like this, kind of really hate this. I'm not sure if, if it is an intentional change, but it really is a weird one. The only other thing I can really think I've actually done is I've slightly changed the iron hooks, the satellites, to be a little bit cheaper in the campaign. But other than that, that is pretty much all we've done. So, let's get straight into the campaign, and let's see how much progress we can make. It's probably going to be a series of battles versus the bulwarks, testing out our new fragment shells, and then hopefully setting up a functional supply line. How many episodes have I said, let's set up a functional supply line? So hopefully we can do that, take an yet another resource zone from the enemy, and thus start the march against the enemy to end the Onyx Watch. So thank you for listening to that rambly, very long intro, and let's get into the campaign, finally. Here we are in the campaign, and I've decided to do one thing. Before we get into our first battle, which is very soon, since there's a bulwark just over yonder, I am going to be disabling the missile launchers for good. As much as I adore the missile launchers, and as much as they are ridiculously effective, honestly, I'm getting bored of them. To be brutally honest, they are making battles dull. There's no explosion from them, there's no clear impact, it simply causes us to win by disabling the enemy, which of course is a very cool concept, but very visually unappealing. So I'm going to be removing these and creating a bit of a safe area in here for a lot of material storage, which later I will be converting into yet another advanced cannon, which may or may not use fragmentation shells. We'll be testing that out in just a moment. Straight into a battle, and straight into a very bad looking situation for this poor little ship. There is a bulwark about to be spawned in as soon as these two die, so don't worry, they're not our only two test subjects. So, before this battle started, I quickly changed around a few things to do with the fuses, because I'm not sure how fragment shells actually work against shields, so I've tried to make it as good as possible to counter them. Essentially, the fuses now will go off as soon as they are deflected any degrees. So as soon as they're even slightly off their normal path, they should detonate and thus shoot the fragments forwards rather than the angle they're deviating towards, which is how they were set up before. Now the problem is, I don't know if the fragments will continue to go forwards or will be deflected by the shields as well, so we're going to have to wait for the bulwark to actually see that. So let's see just how well they do, these little tiny ones, against this little tiny ship. 
And, well, that didn't look very promising for the ship. Yep, that was pretty devastating. Not as good as the flak, though, to be perfectly honest. But I guess it, I guess the big strength with the flak is that it damages everything nearby, whereas the frag, as we can see, only damages things directly in front of it. And it really damages it by the looks of things. That was a really nice hit. That just took out one of our ammo storages. How dare you? How much damage did that actually just deal to me? Oh, less than 1%, because, because I do have like 5 or 6 ammo storages, but even so. Wow, the frag is good at doing that. So, the big the big bonus then to the frag is because it, well, does damage like this, after it pierces the outer shell, all, all of these frags go inside and then instantly wreck whatever's in that room or inside of the turret thus completely disabling that ship in a couple of shots, because who needs EMP turrets when you're crushing the inside of the things you're firing at? That was two of the larger frags there going off. Not that much collateral damage though. So I, so I still think we will be keeping the other cram cannons though to do a bit of just standard damage. And there is the bulwark. Now we do have the advantage of already aiming in, in the same direction and doing the broadside. So, let's see how this does against their shields. And there it goes. So it's hitting the shield there. Deflect. Actually, no. Is that deflecting? That's really hard to tell. Whoa, that was... Tr wow, that is very trippy. What the hell's going on there? Um, so, by the looks of it, what I'm going to say just happened is that the frags got stuck in between shields and started bouncing around. They did eventually find their mark and do some serious internal damage, but that was bizarre to see. No complaints though. Bizarre is good. Not as good as flak though. I've got to say, from the... In oh no, maybe I'm changing my mind. Small sample size at the moment. The lack of collat- wow, that went completely off there. I still can't tell though if the frags are always being deflected because of how many shields the bulwark actually has. Because I'm not sure if it's going through the first and then being deflected by the second, or is it being deflected by the first? I think that's something I will have to test out in the sandbox mode against a box that I make with just one layer of shields. Of course though, no matter how many layers of shield the enemy has, the flak would have still done damage there, even though it turns out that explosions are actually maximum of 10 meters in radius, which is something I didn't know before, and it's got a whole different system to do with that, so weirdnesses regardless which choice I actually go with. And far too much talking for this battle, I am really sorry, don't worry, the future battles we're going to be focusing more on just killing things. There goes the back turret, hopefully. No, it actually managed to survive that. That was very surprising. A much longer battle now Now that we're not using the missiles. We will have to replace the missiles with yet another cannon, though. Which is honestly what I want to see. This is the type of battle I like. Just slogging it out versus both sides. And the level up, thank you very much. I've been leveling up a lot at the moment since we've been increasing all the difficulty and everything. Oh, that there were the larger fragments. Yeah, I'm not completely sold. I do think that flak and frag both have their own benefits, but I honestly prefer flak. Maybe it's because I just love explosions. Now, we could capture this, but I think at this stage, I would rather just see it absolutely destroyed. And I know, I know, less resources, less blah blah blah, but I just find it far more fun. And it is now self-destructing, and yet another victory for the battleship, which took almost no damage, apparently. I guess that is our self-healing, though, as well, since we were healing the entire end section there. Goodbye. Battle finished. Well done, our battleship. So then, I'm going to have to do a few more tests, I think. So don't worry, next time, there'll be less pausing and more just killing. So what we need to do now is pull all for a second. I need to start repairing our silly ship. Where are you? 
Float line bulwark. There we are. Our little triter bulwark, the carnival reject. I'm going to start repairing you, and that's going to take a lot of metal. And then we should have everything else good to go. We have an enemy coming over here, which is a couple of trebuchets, and we have this enemy here, which is a bulwark, a pinnacle, and that thing which I can't pronounce, which I'm always going to call that, by the way. But thank you all for trying last time. It was very much appreciated. You get there, then once we've defeated the trebuchet, we can start building towards this resource zone, and then this resource zone, and connect them all up to this one at the front, and then we are going to be building battleships and fireworks constantly. Here we go into the second battle, now versus the trebuchets. Let's get somewhere nice and safe, and let's get this thing started! Already taking a lot of damage there from the trebuchets. Their firepower is immense. Actually, did I just lose a turret? No, I didn't. Thank you very much, shielding. Leveling up already again. Thank you very much. And all of those frag shells going off. Utterly oblit- Wow! That was a quick set of levels. What the hell was up with that? Not going to complain. Not going to complain. Can hardly see what's going on right now because how dark it is thanks to us being in a rainy tile, but even so. Tre the trebuchet is now off and let's start ignoring salvage since we are just wasting resource here. I think the fragment is clearly very good against enemies with very exposed weapons and such. You can just cut them down so easily. Okay, there's a second trebuchet firing at us already. Let's see how much damage this does, because I do love the trebuchet. I think it, it may be my favourite of the Onyx Watch forces. Just look at this. Instantly, as soon as the combat starts, all of these shells. Several deflects, and wow! Massive damage done there. Wow, actually a lot of damage done there. Wow, a whole turret. Okay, one turret taken down, two turret taken down. A material storage, which had been breached but not destroyed. That was devastating, honestly. But there we go. We have now done enough damage to it. It's no longer hurting us. Only 6% damage taken, though. That looked far worse than it actually was. Even though I can hardly see a thing anyway, so I was kind of guessing the damage. Ooh. Why did we just detonate? No, seriously, why? We're not even under attack by him anymore. Battle over. Lots of levels gained. And a fair bit of repair work needed to be done. Well done, though, Battleship. You are almost now the size of a bulwark, on a side note. In terms of block count and volume, it is only a little bit off. We are very close to being as big as an Onyx Watch ship. Finally, we are invading the Onyx Watch territory. Now we are much further north, attacking the Bulwark before it got even close to our supply lines. So hopefully this time, after we kill this Bulwark, we can start setting up a base here. And because of that, I'm going to do the ultimate scummery of capturing their ship, purely because that Bulwark has enough metal... As I was saying, that bulwark has enough metal to easily make a new iron hook. So as soon as we get over there, I know where the AIs are now, all of the different mainframes, so it should take only a moment to actually capture it. I may need to turn off my gun soon though, because we are peppering it with shots. Leveling so quickly today. Okay, we're pretty much there now, and I've turned off all of my weapons a little bit earlier than expected, so this time, I should be able to capture this with a lot more health than the last time. Uh, da -da -da -da, where are you? There we are. Sorry for the loud minigun noises. And this will make number two. As soon as I eventually destroy it, I am so, so tempted to change this, just so we can destroy this a little bit faster, but I am I am above this. I am above this last time, I'm still above that now. Two AI have been removed. How much bonus experience do we get at the moment anyway? We have times two on growth factor and we have times three on this. We've also lowered this, the resource given, and that gives us 509% experience. No wonder we've been leveling so much since we changed the um, enemy design difficulty. That's ridiculously high. 
do as much damage as possible, and move all of these, so it's a bit harder to heal. And now we move on to the third, which is actually behind me, I think. And that over there is just... yeah, that's not the AI. Okay, carrying on. Well, this is going to be a little bit handy. So, in the personal attribute section of the upgrade tab, I can actually increase the power of my gun. So, I think I'm going to be spending all of the points I have earned today in that. So, right now, I have got an extra 50, well, almost 50% damage on grenade and minigun damage. So, that should be very, very helpful indeed. Okay, let's just do this. Now, the reason why it looks like I've been hurt is because I may have accidentally detonated one of their ammunition storages. Yeah, kind of burns a little bit, honestly. It's very spicy, his ammunition. Ooh. That was a weird thing to fall into. Random little cave there. Well, corridor, I think, would be a better word. This is with the buff. Eventually, we will break through. This was 50%, well, 45% faster. Yeah. Thank you! Finally into the wooden section, and we melt it away in seconds. Now that should be it. Yes, it is. Okay, and let's look at our new carnival reject with a little bit more health than the last one. <laughs> that is kind of glorious. And yes, I am going to be keeping it these colours. People are asking me, am I going to be keeping it with the carnival reject colours, or am I going to fix all of my colour scheme? I'm going to be keeping it like this. And both of these bulwarks will be sent against the enemy at the end. Oh, but saying that, if I sacrifice this one now, I could so easily set up the iron hook and set up all of the float lines in a matter of moments. So I think, sadly, this one is going to be destroyed. I have already saved the blueprint, so we can make bulwarks in the future by ourselves, as I do really want to see several bulwarks versus the Iron Throne. Or Actually, what's it called? The... Is it the Iron Throne or is it the Onyx Throne? No, the Iron Throne is something completely different, which I think everyone knows what that is. Whoops a daisy. Okay, let's destroy this, and let's remake the Iron Hook, which has been destroyed nearby. Oh yeah, and I've changed my, my symbols over. We are now worshipping Zinch rather than Corn, because we're using battery power and magic and all that, so I think it's a little bit more fitting. Okay, Bulwark, you go over there. Are we under attack anywhere else? No, not at the moment, which is a first in quite a while. And when you get there, you start repairing. You can give your resources at least. There we are, close enough to actually do the repair work. Come on, move faster, Bulwark. I know you have like no engines left and no propellers, but I'm sure you can make it there in a matter of moments. Close enough. Okay, so destroyed. Yes. You move there. How much metal? That Whoa! 817,000. That's pretty okay, to be honest. Why aren't you repairing, though? You are close enough, and that... Does that not have any repair tentacles? A little bit dark right now, so don't worry, I can't see a thing either. As soon as it loads in, I could perhaps use the repair tentacles. Hello. Hello, how are you? Misc, uh, repair tentacle, apparently we don't have any. And just put them here, in this little space we have here. Good enough. Just so we can get it started, since we do have repair bots as well. There we are, the healing is being done, the iron hook can now go back into space and start harvesting resources here. I think it does have the fuel engine, so it should just be working outright. Satellite online, excellent. So now we are harvesting from two different resource zones at the same time, so all I need to do is start mass producing a load of float lines to go from here over to here, and thus we can get all of the resources in one area and start really pumping out a lot of forces. Now one problem I do have is I do want to collect this area, however, we are going to be attacked again pretty soon by this lovely fellow, so I do need my battleship somewhere nearby. I can't currently afford a second battle battleship, and I don't really trust the fireworks against the bulwark. As much as they have proved themselves time and time again to be pretty good, against some of the godly designs, I wouldn't really trust it. So this is an iron... ooh. 
This is a ship I have not seen before, and a pioneer. Okay, so this is going over here, then down to here, and will probably actually attack us after that. So our vehicle, which thankfully is actually pretty fast, considering it's a battleship, will move over here to intercept when it attacks. So back in a second, once I've set up all the float lines, how we can start making a little construction area. Or maybe what I should do is actually collect, um, connect all three of these and make a kind of triangle, then in the centre of the triangle have a little dock, like a floating dock. That would be pretty cool. So I might do that instead in the future, but for now we'll just build here so we've actually got a force to start sending against the enemy. At last, we have a functioning supply line. As soon as these last four float lines are completely repaired, we are now attached from the initial resource zone all the way to the second. Now, at the moment, the pipeline is a little bit wonky, of course, because originally we had that really weird resource zone over here, which didn't actually have an infinite supply of resource. So now that's gone, this is our secondary resource zone. Soon enough, we're going to connect it to the third one and the fourth fourth one which is currently being defended over here and then we can really start making a lot of ships and a lot of planes. I also am considering doing some other stuff in terms of making some new ships before the end of the campaign but I'm not too sure if I want to do that or just rush towards the end at this stage. The supply line has just now finished, and as soon as the last float line was completely repaired, we are already under attack yet again against the ship I've never seen before, in addition to a Pioneer and a Pinnacle. So, let's turn off the resource view so I can see what I'm doing, and let's put ourselves quite close against the enemy. It really does seem like this ship is a lot better close range and medium range than it is at longer ranges. So, begin the battle. Let's see how we do then. And here we go. Now, sadly, the game did just crash, so I've had to restart this battle. I just went in there as soon as the fight started. It instantly crashed, but at least that meant I could lure this guy into a better tile so it's no longer raining and grey. So, yay for being able to see what's actually going on, I suppose. Just need to deal with the two smaller ships first, then we can see what this actually is. Is it as strong as the Bulwark? Is it a godly design, an expert design? I actually don't know, I've not heard of it before. I'm going to assume it's a godly design, because that seems to be the vast majority of what we're actually fighting now. And I still keep on forgetting to change this back when I've messed around with settings. There we are. No longer killing the thing which is already dead. And once again, a lovely level up. I think I do like... I think I do like the frag. I think, as much as I've changed my mind a million times during this episode, I like the frag shells, and I think I will be keeping them. Two damage, so I should stop firing. Yes, I have. Bit too much recoil as well. I do need to change a few things with the advanced cannon still. And there we are. Wow. Certainly looks very cool. Does it have any shielding? It has a little bit of shielding now on the main turret. Not sure about the rest, though. Oh, let's just see what happened there, and look at that deflection though. I really do think there is a few issues though, in terms of trying to counter shields with the frag. I was saying that, <laughs> when you have enough of them, and there are thousands of fragments bouncing everywhere, it does seem to get the job done pretty darn well. So, I'm really unsure what to think of it right now. I do need to do some testing in the sandbox mode. And it's kind of glorious to see so many fragments. One thing I could change is the spread of the fragments. At the moment, they are actually quite wide. I think you can change that in the Shell Designer UI, so I m might be doing that in the future. I'm not too sure. I do like the fact I am damaging everything in an area, even if it is far more concentrated than the flak or the explosive. Well, this is definitely not on the level of the Bulwark, that's for certain. Very cool looking ship, though. Two damage, so I should stop fighting it now, and yes we are, that's the last few shells now coming here. I think the reason why I'm leveling so much now is because with the EMP, we got them to two damaged or AI dead a lot faster, and I don't think I was getting experience from the self-destruction like, well, like it is now. Whereas now I've swapped over to pure damage, I'm damaging more blocks? 
That's the only thing I can think of. But with that, and with the destruction of yet another Onyx Watch Force, I'm afraid I'm all out of time for today's episode, and it's time for me to go and take some medicine and get some rest so I can talk normally, hopefully in the not-so-distant future. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode we will have connected all of the resource zones, hopefully got a third and fourth resource zone, and we can start our final march. I think we have now reached the tipping point in which we are going to just completely steamroll the Onyx Watch. Also feel free to tell me, which one do you prefer visually, the fragments or the explosive flak? All feedback is always very welcome. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye.